Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, Big Paul here. Today, we are going to talk about what I consider to be the most effective form of hit training out there. Not the Mike Mincer stuff, but the one and only Dante Trudell, DC Training. For those of you that haven't heard of DC Training, you can go Google it. You'll find plenty of information about it. I worked with Dante for, I don't know, a period of three years, probably from 2002, 2003, somewhere around there to 2005, 2006-ish. I don't remember the exact dates, but back when Dante still trained people, now he runs True Nutrition Protein and Supplement Company. And Dante packed some serious size on me. I did what was really... It, DC training is really a true form of progressive overload. I think Dante gets agitated when it's lumped in as a hit training program and lumped in with Mike Mincer's training. It's nothing like that. It's very different. It's its own set of principles. But I'm going to talk about DC training here in just a second. So if you want an effective hit style training program, something that you're going to be in and out of the gym quick with, you're going to maximize recovery. You're going to push the intensity to the maximum. This is probably the program you should be doing. It's very effective. It works. It's brutal. It's the type of program that you have no choice but to grow on. You got to be young, healthy, have good joints for it, I think. I mean, Dante would probably argue that. But now that I am older, I still... I don't do this that often, the style of training. I don't do progressive overload training anymore. But if you're in good shape, good your joints are in good shape, you want to grow, it is certainly a way to do it, and it is a very effective way to do it. And I'm going to talk about all the principles of DC training in just one second. All right, as I mentioned before, I worked with Dante for about three years, and I got the DC training really for me is more of a power building style of training. It is true progressive overload. You're battling with a logbook every week, trying to improve, get another rep, add five more pounds to the bar. You, you work through exercises until you master those exercises. Each week, there is a goal and an objective to achieve in the gym. And the competitor in me loves that style of training. It is very programmatic. I know that I have to beat last workouts, my last workout effort, and I have to do another rep. I have to do, um, I have to do another five pounds than what I did the last time. So it's pretty cut and dry. And at its concept, the basic concept of it is pretty simple. It's progressive overload at its purest form. If you are adding more weight to the bar, if you are eating more clean food, and your weight has increased and you haven't gotten fat, or there's only one possible outcome. And that outcome is that you have added more muscle mass. It really is that simple. All right, folks, I want to take a quick break from this episode to tell you about the new e-course that Kurt Havens and I have put together, The Scientific Principles of Anabolics and PEDs. This is the most comprehensive PED e-course ever put together with over 80 modules, including intros to PEDs, major steroid profiles, competitor off-season cycles, non-competitor cycles, contest prep cycles, HGH fundamentals, insulin fundamentals, side effect management, safer use concepts, fat loss agents, estrogen management, and advanced PED and hypertrophy science. It is the best course out there of its kind. Go check it out. Link is in the video description below. Oh, you know, it gets a little more detailed than that, but uh, some of the course concepts of DC training, and I'm going to go through 
through this is maximum muscle growth stimulation. Blast the muscle with maximum high intensity training using rest pause sets, static holds, and controlled negatives. You want to use every bit of stimulus that you can in the most effective, shortest amount of time to stimulate that muscle to grow. It is a lower volume style of training. I wouldn't say that it's Mike Mincer one set in and out of the gym type of training, but it is very low volume. Full muscle recovery. You're going to allow enough time for that muscle to fully recover before you hit that muscle again. Uh, extreme stretching, which is also a part of the DC style of training, which is loaded stretching. There's been some debate about whether or not that causes muscle growth or not, but loaded stretches, loaded stretches are a part of the DC style of training. Blast and cruise style style of training. This is really, that's what we called it back in the day, but it's really just periodization. You run a four to five week block of going all out. And then you take a week or so to deload, which is essentially what it was. I think Dante was the first person I ever heard talking about programming and deloads and bodybuilding, to be honest with you, you know, 20 or so years ago. Maximum frequency. This is an area where he would differ from other hit advocates. You want to train as frequently as possible and re as your recovery will allow. Uh, the base system that Dante used to use, I don't know what he has now. You would train each body part three times in a two-week period of time, sometimes up to four times in a two-week period of time. The concept is that each training session provides an opportunity for additional growth in the more growth stimulating phases that you get in in a year that you're going to be a bigger bodybuilder at the end of the day. So for example, if you're only training once a week versus three times in two weeks, or let's say two times per week, you're going to have double the stimulating opportunities to grow in a year. You know, so for let's let's just say, for example, we're, we'll count every week, even the deloads, as a stimulating opportunity. If you train once per week, that would only be fifty upper fifty two opportunities for growth in a year. Whereas if you trained twice a week, you're going to have one hundred and four. If you trained once every or three times in every two weeks, something like 80, or I don't know, 75, 76, and just pulling a number off the top of my head, opportunities for growth. So more frequency, more opportunities for growth. Eating with a purpose. This is another big part of Dante's principles uh, with DC training is eating with a purpose. You're not going to get big eating 100 calories above maintenance. I know in theory, you can possibly do it, but guys that get large generally don't get large that way. You want to eat. You not only are progressing your weights, you are progressing your food. You're not going to come out of the gate eating like a 300-pound bodybuilder. But if you want to be a 300-pound bodybuilder, you have to work your way progressively up to eating like one. So the concept here, and that's something that Justin Harris, I think, sort of carries forward now, is to progressively increase the amount of clean food that you eat you eat. And as you progress that food, the more food that you can process, the more you're going to give yourself an opportunity to grow. So that is part of the principles of DC training. So that, if I had to distill it down to its elements, that's sort of it. Um, why, why it works really is very simple. It's foolproof. Like I said, it's progressive overload. If you are getting stronger, if you are eating more food, if you are not getting fat while you're eating more, you're eating more food and gaining weight, you're going to be bigger. There were several different splits that Dante used to have. I don't know what he does now. I I'm sure that some of this stuff was has changed. There was a two way split. There was an A B split. He used to have, it was chest, shoulders, triceps, back width, and back thickness in the two-way split. This was sort of a beginner's training split. And then the split B was biceps, forearms, quads, hamstrings, and calves. Uh, the three-way split, which was chest, shoulders, and triceps, quads, hamstrings, and calves, back width, back thickness, biceps, and forearms was the three-way uh, three split, which essentially is just a PPL. That's what I did the majority of the time that I trained with Dante was a PPL style of routine.
and I was training every other day. So there was time for recovery. That's how I did that split. Uh, with Dante's programs, there he usually would rotate through exercises with the DC training. So with DC training, there would be an A, B, and C exercise choice split with your with your workout routines. So workout one, you would have exercise A. Workout two, you would have exercise B. Workout three, you would have exercise C. And the way you would work through these exercises is you would progress through them. And if you hit two consecutive workouts without progressing, increasing your weight, increasing your rep ranges, increasing your reps on that exercise, you would drop that exercise and put something else in. Uh, the exercise schedule, like I said, there's a three-way split, which was 52 growth phases a year. There, That was for you know beginners. The, the above average recovery schedule, the one which is a two-way split, 104 growth phases a year, if you're going to train everything twice a week, you're going to get more growth phases. Exercise form. This is another thing that was critically important with DC training. This was something that Dante always preached when I worked with him. Your training needs to be controlled. Your exercise form needs to be controlled in exactly the same every workout. Your negative, your times to take your negative. So let's say if you did a three count negative, that needs to remain three count every single workout. Usually it was controlled negative, explosive positive. And if you deviate it from your exercise form, your rep timing in any way to beat the logbook, you didn't beat the logbook. You just got better at cheating your workout. So that is something to keep in mind. You want to have controlled form. You want to put yourself in a mechanical position to place the proper leverage on the muscle to grow. It's not power lifting. This is bodybuilding. Keep that in mind. We're trying to put ourselves in an I think Dante calls it a mechanical advantageous position for inducing stimulus for growth. So you want to be in a position where you're placing maximum load on the muscle and not getting better at using leverage or cheating. This is not power lifting. Rest pause sets were a part of Dante's system. So for example, if you use an exercise, let's say bench press, you would do your first set, which was five to eight reps. You would go to absolute failure. Then you would rack the weight for something like 20 to 30 seconds. I think he would have us take 10 to 15 deep reps. Then you would take it back out again, do another set, which was the rest pause, which would be another three to four reps to failure. Then you would do another set, one to three reps to failure. So you would essentially have three sets for advanced training. Sometimes you would even place a static hold and go to static failure at the end. And then you would also use the extreme stretching, the loaded stretching after you were done with that exercise. So you would do really, well, he would call it one working set per exercise, but really it was something like three to four if you think about the rest pause as being an additional set. Uh, exceptions to the rest pause are some things you just feasibly can't do rest pause on. So for example, Deadlifts, you're not going to be able to rest pause on deadlifts. You would crush your CNS. Quads, you're going to, you know, if you're doing barbell squats, you can't, or heavy hack squats, you can't feasibly do rest pause. Battling with the logbook. As I mentioned before, this is a true form of progressive overload. Progressive overload is very important in here. So you would want, the goal is every workout you're coming in is to beat your last he would count is your last workout. So he would count your total reps for the combined rest pause sets. So let's say for bench press, you did eight reps on your third set or your first set. Sorry, eight reps on your first set. You did four reps on your second set. We're at 12 and you did three reps on your third set, which would be 15. So that would be 15 total reps. The goal for the next workout Let's say our prescribed rep range was 15 to 18. The total for the rest pause sets, the goal for the next workout would be to add one more rep. And once we reach that 18 rep range, I'm just using an arbitrary number here, then you would add five pounds to the bar. 
and progress through that rep range again. If you go two workouts without progressing, then you dump that exercise and put a different one in. Warm-ups, I don't want to go too much into the warm-ups. This is just something, really, your goal is to warm up for the for the working set. The least amount of warm-ups that you need, the better. Just do enough to be ready to go. The whole periodization thing, it was four to six week blocks, usually closer to four. You're With this style, style of training, you're going to need a break probably after four to five weeks. And then you re- take a deload and then you repeat again. Before the deload, usually it was just straight sets. Keep some reps in reserves, no rest pauses. It would be the time to experiment with new exercises if you wanted to flop some exercises out for your next growth phase. Cardio was a part of the system. I'm not going to get into it. Um, By the way, I have this document up on my website for free if you want to download the DC training principles. It's on my website for free. Go to the free stuff on my website. You can download it. Um, I'm not going to go into the sample two-way routine, but the sample routines, you can get that off of my off of my um, off of my website. For the extreme stretching, the goal of the extreme stretching is to expand the fascia surrounding the muscle and allowing the muscle to grow bigger than otherwise would. I don't know if in science now that we accept that that's still the truth. Uh, the idea came from John Perillo. I think there were some studies done on it. Um, it, it was a study done that showed that birds uh, with a stretch muscle and they did loaded stress muscle that they did some high um, post-mortem biopsy and there was actually more muscle growth from there. Um, a more practical application, you know, if you think about it, is how synthol expands the muscle. I don't know if that holds true, though, in principle. We, we don't know about that now. Um, I don't do loaded stretches anymore, but I used to do them. So you would try to hold you would. So for example, a loaded stretch would be take a light pair of dumbbells for a dumbbell fly. You hold it in the stretch possession position and try to hold it for 60 seconds. I have details on all the different types of, uh, shoulder stretches, uh, effective exercises. We want to pick ones that are going to be the highest effective for stimulus. Those are the ones you want to use. The ones that are going to put you in the most productive position to grow. In conclusion, if you want to find out more about this, I have, like I said, I have this ebook up on my website for free. You don't have to pay anything for it. All I'm asking for is an email address that has the basics of DC training. If you are interested in trying a a hit style training, I would highly suggest this program. If you want a progressive overload program. This is better than a lot of the crap that I've seen floating around. Now, give it a try. See how it works for you. If you've done DC training before, let me know in the comments section below what you think of it. Thank you for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.